Hi, I'm Ben. Welcome to my basement. Some of you uh, may have seen an earlier video where I had an issue with my old inverter. So this is the Solark 12K. Uh, basically, it's an all-in-one inverter, and it takes uh, AC power in, it takes solar power in, it takes battery power, and it kind of puts those all together and allows you to use all of them simultaneously or one at a time. So it can take 12 kilowatts of solar power um, into it, and uh, it can push that back to the grid. So yeah, it can work as a straight grid tie inverter uh, without batteries, it can work off grid. So typically I operate uh, between 48 and 63 volts. Um, I'm using a 16S battery setup, so um, that's pretty perfect for me. So the battery is a lithium NMC chemistry. Um, these are a couple of different EV packs. So the Solark has just actually come out with a new model of the 12K. Uh, it's an outdoor rated, uh, so you can put it outside. It, it can be, you know, it can get wet. Uh, it's got a couple of features that were changed as well. They, they also took the, uh, they took the Wi-Fi dongle here and they took the uh, PV switch and they put them on the side so that way you can put a gutter right up underneath it instead of keeping it down. So yeah, so I mean, that'll save on some conduit. Uh, you can just use offset nipples to go right into here. Um, otherwise you had to keep it up away from there a little. Um, this is the one of the most recent ones, but not the newest. So we have the circuit breakers here. The one on the left is a 250 amp uh, DC breaker. So that's for the battery uh, input. Um, and these three over here, uh, there's the load, the grid and the generator. So. Uh, load is for power out to the house, grid is for power in, um, and generator actually can be used for a number of different things. Uh, right now I'm not using it. Um, so the, the generator breaker can be used as a, a solar input uh, for AC coupled solar. Uh, if you're not using AC coupled solar, it can also be used as a generator input. Um, and it can also be used as a smart load output. Um, so that allows the inverter to control that circuit breaker. Uh, and so, you know, you can have say a water heater or, or something hooked up to it. So when your battery gets full or, or whatever setting you choose it to be at, then it will turn that circuit breaker on and, and turn on your water heater or, or something similar. So I, I am running all the power that, that my house is using right now and day to day is running right through the Solark. So, um, the only downside to that is I've essentially limited myself to a 50 amp service from 100, but that's okay for me because I I kind of pay attention to what I use and you know I just make sure I don't char charge my car and run the dryer at the same time. That's all. <laughs> so I've never had this thing glitch out on me. I I have shut it down a couple of times trying to start my air compressor, but um, other than that, uh, there have been no error codes. Uh, I think the one time I was running off grid with my dryer, I shut it down with that as well, uh, but that's an electric dryer. So, um, and the cool part about this is if there is ever an error, if it's not a, a bad error, you know, just an overload or something, it'll start right back up again. Um, you know, give it a minute and turns right back on. So yeah, the, the air compressor over overloaded it. Uh, Uh, it's a it's a heavy 120 volt load. It's a large air compressor. I think it's a 20 gallon. Um, and these things, the only thing they don't like is heavy inductive 120 volt loads. Um, you know, they 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 don't do well with it. Um, I've seen something from Solark that said, you know, if you're more than I think it's 14 or 1800 watts out of balance, um, they'll have an issue with that from line one to line two, um, which definitely is. The air compressor definitely does that. So, so, so compared to you know something like an Outback or or you know a, a Sunny Island, uh, the the Solark is really an easy installation. Um, you know everything's here. You know there's there's no no need to add on other load centers or or piece something together. I know Schneider has all their boxes all on the wall, and you can piece together a million of them. Um, but the Solark has everything built in. So it's got the DC breaker, the AC breakers, it's got the Wi-Fi, it's got the the screen on it, um, and so. So compared to the other ones, it was a real easy install. I've installed, I've installed Outback systems. I've installed a couple of Schneiders. I've installed a few different types of Outback systems as well. Um, so, you know, Outback is a whole bunch of different stuff. And, 
you know, some of them have, they have pre-made, pre-wired systems that are easier to install, but it's still a whole bunch of stuff and it's just a kind of a pain to work with. Whereas this, you know, inside the junction box, it's, you know, you got your wires go straight up in there and that's it. You don't have to mess around and um, get your hands in tiny places where they're not supposed to be. So uh, we'll start from left to right here. This is the uh, battery input. Um, so negative and positive. Uh, we have a four aught copper uh, battery cable coming in. Um, and then the, the DC breaker. So this is the, the solar input, the PV input. Um, and uh, this has, uh, it has two separate inputs. So uh, down here we see PV one and PV two. Um, and each one has two inputs, so you can combine two strings here. Um, and this is for two separate high voltage charge controllers built in. So they go up to 500 volts um, and uh, they, they operate independently. So you could have, you know, a north facing array like I do, a south facing array. The MPPT range is up to 425, um, but you can go over that, uh, which is pretty cool too. It won't, it won't blow anything up. So I have nine panels coming off of my roof here and all I need, I, I could probably even use 12 gauge wire, honestly. I have 10 gauge wire here. Um, but with a lower voltage charge controller, you, you would have much bigger wire um, coming in. So it, it allows you to cut down on wire size and also you can put the array far away um, and you don't need um, as big wire uh, to get there. Uh, these guys right here, these are the, the CTs, the current transformers. Um, these go over to my main panel. I'm not actually using them right now, um, but basically they're they're here to uh, measure the the amount of current that's coming into your house. This would be for like a um, a, a scenario where you have a backed up loads panel and a non backed up loads panel. Um, you would use those CTs. Uh, parallel operation, so uh, you can put up to nine of these in parallel. Um, so this would be the, the wire connect, uh, the CAN bus and the RS-485. Um, that's for uh, batteries that have a BMS that can talk to this, um, which I'm, I'm not using, but. Um, so over here we have the load, the grid, and the generator breaker. Um, into those we have six gauge wire. Uh, and I'm using six gauge, you could use four gauge as well, um, but it really depends on the temperature rating of the wire. Um, so this is six gauge MC, which has a 90 C rating, um, which is good. And then uh, we have the neutrals here. The neutrals are just combined on this, uh, on this one bus bar here. And then the grounds are on this other one. Um, some inverters have a separate neutral, um, but this one, they're all combined together. Um, one thing to note as well is if you ever start this up and you don't have the neutral and ground bonded together, like in your main panel, like you're supposed to, uh, it will throw an error and it will not let you go any further until you do that. Uh, yeah, so I had a 5,000 watt inverter before that. It was an, an all-in-one hybrid, kind of like this, but um, not as good. Uh, and so I, I would overload it occasionally uh, and the wife wasn't happy with it. So uh, it, was, it was time to replace it. Um, had a little mishap with it as well, so uh, it, it needed to go. So I went from a 5,000 watt to an 8,000 watt, um, and that really does just about everything I need it to. Um, I can't charge my car and run my dryer at the same time, but that's okay. <laughs> I had installed a couple of Solarks uh, before I bought this one. Um, I, I realized how easy they were to work with and how good of a product it was. Um, and I, I had installed plenty of other types of inverters as well. And I honestly, I wanted this Solark in my basement because, um, you know, the, the company is great. Like the, the tech support is amazing. They, they are constantly working to, um, update this thing and make it better. And they take suggestions from their installers and implement them. So I, I was really excited about having this. I think it weighs about 70 pounds. So one person can pretty easily lift it up on the wall. It's got two handles on it. It's a lot lighter because there's no large transformer built in. So this is a solar edge. Uh, this is a 10 kW solar edge inverter. And uh, I have this uh, AC coupled with the solar converter. It can do AC and DC coupling. Um, and I'm doing it doing both because because I can. So I have two arrays. One is AC coupled, one is DC coupled. 
and uh, this controls both of them. The Solark uses frequency shifting uh, when we're running in off-grid mode. When the battery gets up near 100% state of charge, uh, it will actually raise the frequency uh, that's coming out of it. So it'll raise it to 60.5 hertz or 60.9 hertz, uh, and that will then shut off the solar edge inverter. Uh, the solar edge says, hey, there's a problem, the grid's no good, and shuts right off. There are some settings in here that uh, will allow it to uh, modulate uh, when it gets to a different frequency, but I haven't set those up yet. Yeah, so the, the grid power, well, it comes in here, goes into this panel first. Um, from here, it goes out to the Solark. And then from the Solark, it comes back into this panel. Um, this one is just a sub panel off of, off of that panel, uh, but they're both connected together. Um, so when I shut this off, it shuts off all incoming power uh, to the house. But yeah, if we had a power outage right now, here's what it would look like. That's it. So now we're just running right on the Solark and batteries. Yep. Um, the, uh, the Solar Edge is still producing power. We're getting about 550 watts out of here. Um, so that didn't shut off at all. But it switched over to battery power faster than the Solar Edge could, could notice it. Um, otherwise it would have thrown an error. So I just felt my phone buzz in my pocket and that was the app alerting me that there was a grid failure on my inverter. Uh, so that's another cool thing. The, the, the transfer time is so quick that you don't necessarily know that you're running on battery. Um, and so, you know, blink and you miss it. Uh, and so having an app there that'll tell you, hey, you're running on battery um, is a pretty cool thing too. So on the left, we have the solar power in. Um, the next one we have uh, grid in, which is zero. Uh, then we have power out to the loads uh, and power from the battery. So there kind of just details everything. Uh, we have solar, we only have 100 watts coming in right now, um, and that's on L leg one. Um, that is, and then it shows the voltage, the amperage, the wattage. Um, then grid power, it still shows voltage on there, but there's not actually voltage on there. I'm not sure why. Um, <laughs> Then uh, inverter is this column here. It shows 800 watts total, 60 hertz, and then it'll show line one and line two. So line one is 6.3 amps, line two is 4.7 amps. Um, and then there's the total in from the battery on this screen. Also, I haven't hooked up the temp sensor yet, so that just says 25C. Um, and then it gives the inverter temperatures internally. And that one, so the one, the AC end down here is for the generator uh, port, which I'm not using right now. Uh, so the battery goes from anywhere from 48 to uh, 63 uh, is the maximum. Uh, so the, the grid screen basically it just shows my usage throughout the day. Um, and then we can go month, year, here's the settings. So we can, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of different screens for setting it up. I've had this running for about six months now, um, and given everything I know about it now, you know, everything I've done with it, uh, I would buy it again in a heartbeat. Um, you know, it's it's by far the best inverter I've ever used. So uh, I've done a bunch of um, load tests and uh, gone through the screens and everything um, on my own channel. Uh, it's Ben's Solar and Battery, and uh, we'll leave a link to it below. Oh, shit.